Welcome back to Gadget at the Techstop.net. It's the place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm Father Robert Balasser, I'm a Catholic priest in the Jesuits. That's the Society of Jesus, a religious order of the Catholic Church. And this week we're taking a look at the E1 Entertainment Edition Pico Projector from Favi Entertainment. The E1 is the Entertainment Edition Pico Projector from Favi Entertainment. It measures 4.5 inches long by 2.5 inches wide and 1 inch thick. It's smaller and lighter than the Favi B1 Business Edition Pico Projector, about the size of my armored iPhone with a weight of less than a pound with batteries. Opening the box reveals everything you need to get the E1 up and running in just a few minutes. Favi has included a universal power adapter, mini USB cord, RCA interface cable, a mini tripod, remote control, and four AA batteries. The design of the E1 is simple and straightforward. The front of the projector houses the lens assembly and a small wheel that controls focus. The top of the projector has a circular multi-button selection wheel to control menu navigation, as well as a shortcut button for brightness. The right side of the E1 has a port for external 5-volt power, while the left side holds the power switch. The back of the unit has three different ports, one for audio-video input, one for headphone or speaker output, and a third for a mini-USB cable. The unit also has a sensor for the IR remote control and two speakers that are embedded into the sides of the case. The underside of the E1 has a hard point for connecting the projector to any standard tripod mount, including the mini tripod that comes with the kit. This is necessary to angle the projector as it doesn't have any built-in mechanisms for tilting the unit. Removing the battery cover reveals a cradle for four AA batteries and an SD memory card reader that is compatible with SD and SDHC modules up to 32 gigabytes. The E1 is rated for 12 lumens of light output, and the projector can throw images and video with a resolution of up to 640 by 480. The LED light source is non-user replaceable, but rated to last up to 20,000 hours. The light rating is a bit low for our tastes, but the upside is that with a low-powered, cool-running LED lamp, the E1 is almost silent as it doesn't require a cooling fan. The remote control of the E1 is simple and intuitive. It uses a membrane keypad and has a total of 12 buttons. These buttons will allow you to control all menu functions while also giving you instant access to the play and volume functions of the projector. The E1 has several input options, starting with the aforementioned SD card slot. With the card slot built into the bottom of the unit, you can pull an SD card out of your digital device, plug it directly into the E1, and have the option of immediately projecting your images and videos on a wall, screen, or other projector-friendly surface. The E1 also has the ability to receive standard definition analog audio and video signals through the included RCA cable. You simply connect the RCA connectors to your source and plug the other end of the cable into the input port on the E1. The final display option is to connect the E1 to your computer via its mini USB port. Doing so will register the E1 as a USB card reader, giving you access to the unit's internal 1 gigabyte of memory and any SD card that you may have plugged into the unit. Using the E1 starts with loading four AA batteries into the battery tray and mounting the projector on a tripod. After using one of the three input options, you can either plug in the AC adapter of the E1 or run it directly off its batteries. The unit will come up with a menu that lets you select your video source, one click, and you're projecting. It's really that easy. Performance of the E1 is good for a Pico, but don't expect it to match a full-size projector that is six times the weight and ten times the size, or even that of a larger, louder Pico. The E1 will project a reasonably clear image of up to 20 inches in a moderately dark room. In total darkness, that image size increases to 40 inches. The image definitely has a tendency to wash out with brighter parts of videos or images, but much of that has to do with the quality of the projection surface and not the E1. Don't even think of using this projector in daylight, as it just isn't powerful enough. The speakers are just passable for basic listening in a silent room, but they are too tinny for serious entertainment. For that, you need to use the headphones or external speakers. On the plus side, the E1 doesn't have a noisy cooling fan providing its own soundtrack, so you don't need to overpower the E1 just to hear. Favi claims up to six hours of power on a single set of AA batteries, but we found battery life to be between four and a half to five hours. This, of course, will depend on how bright you set the lamp and what kind of batteries you use to power the E1. One of the standout features of the E1 is a rudimentary media player that is integrated into the unit's operating system. This media player can display images in JPEG or BMP format, videos in MPEG-4, AVI, MOV, 3GP, and MP4, as well as audio files in MP3, WMA, OGG, AAC, WAV, PCM, and ADPCM. This media player is a somewhat simpler version of the software included in the B1, 
but even so, it turns the projector into a standalone presentation or entertainment machine. The Favi E1 Mini LED Entertainment Projector is available now with a one-year limited warranty. We've been able to find this Pico online for as little as $200. The E1 is a pretty cool little gadget, and there are a lot of things that I really like about it. I like the fact that it's small, light, and compact. I like the fact that it carries its own power supply in the 4 AA batteries. I like the fact that the internal embedded media player is, is actually quite competent. Even though it's more simple than some of the others we've used, it's actually still quite high quality and easy to use. I like the fact that it has an SD SDHC card reader, a card reader for the most popular memory format there is, which means that most of us will be able to take the card out of our camera or our camcorder and immediately display those images and videos on a box, on a wall, on a screen, wherever. I also really like the fact that it's quiet, really quiet. With no internal fan, it means that I'm not competing with that whining turbine thing in the background whenever I want to play a video clip or say hook it up to my Xbox. It will just work really well as an entertainment device. That's not to say that it's perfect. Anyone who has seen my review of the B1 knows that there are some definite disadvantages to going with the E1 over its business counterpart. First of all, the B1 is brighter, much brighter, three times brighter. That means that with the E1, you will not be able to project an image as large or in as bright a room. Also, the B1 has much higher resolution than the E1. 640 by 480 for the E1, 800 by 600 for the B1, and the B1 can actually take larger resolutions and scale them down, which makes it more flexible. Also, I'm not really sure why, but on the E1, they put the card reader inside the battery compartment, which means you have to take the cover off in order to change the chip. With the B1, it's outside where it should be. However, the big one has to be connectivity. With the B1, I can connect it to the VGA port of my laptop or my desktop. Not so much with the E1. With the E1, you're going to have to have a laptop that has a RCA composite out, and I don't really think there are any of those anymore, or you're going to have to carry a converter box to go from DVI or DisplayPort or VGA to RCA, and who wants to carry a converter box that's bigger than the projector it feeds? No. The thing is that the E1 doesn't compete with the B1, but rather it serves a different audience. If you want something that's brighter, you go with the B1. If you want something that can connect to your computer and, say, project PowerPoint presentations, you go with the B1. If you want something with a higher resolution, you go with the B1. But if you want something that's quiet, something that's self-contained, something that carries its own power source, something that really can be used to, say, project your images and your photos in the background without noise, then there is no competitor to the E1. Now, if you want to find out more about this, or perhaps try to pick up one of your own, go to the Favi website at www.favientertainment.com, or you can drop by our website at www.thetechstop.net. While you're at it, Drop by our Twitter feed at www.twitter.com forward slash PadreSJ and you'll be able to keep up with whatever we've got in the lab. I'm Father Robert Balasare, this is Gadget, and remember, there's no Uber Geek without you.